So in this video, we're going to talk about operations of square root numbers, uh, operations with square roots when we have negative numbers. In other words, when we have the negative, uh, negative, the square root of a negative number, and we change that into i times the square root of that number, how do we handle the operations on this type of a scenario? Well, I have three examples that we're going to work on down here together. And one of the things that you want to make sure that you uh, do when you're uh, performing these operations is we want to first begin by expressing all of our square roots that are in my um, that are in my problem. We want to express all of these square roots in terms of i before we ever you know combine, add, or subtract, or anything like that. The next thing I want to point out to you is that once we get our answer here, we want to uh, write the result in its standard form. Or in other words, I want to write it in its form of a plus bi, where we have a being the real portion and bi being the imaginary portion. So let's jump in. We have this problem right here, uh, negative 81 minus, or excuse me, negative, the square root of negative 81 minus the square root of negative 144. And because we want to start by expressing each of these terms in terms of i, we take that negative out, we write it as i, well, we're going to, i times the square root of 81 minus i times the square root of 144. So that's just expressing each of these square root symbols in terms of i. Now we can go in and we can take the square root of 81. We know that that is 9, and we still have an i there, minus the square root of 144, which is a 12i, and simplify 9 minus 12i, and you get negative 3i. So the key to that is just first you want to pr uh, you want to express these in terms of i and then you simplify from there. Let's look at this next example we have right here. Negative 2 plus the square root of negative 11 and all of that is squared. Well, I am going to start by expressing this portion here in terms of i like we are encouraged to do. So I have a negative 2 plus i times the square root of 11, and that whole thing is going to be squared. Okay, so we have a term here, negative 2 plus i times the square root of 11, negative 2 plus i times the square root of 11, okay, because that's what this uh, power tells us to do. So we're going to FOIL the first terms, and we get a positive 4. We have the outer terms here, so I have a negative 2i times the square root of 11, and another negative 2i times the square root of 11. So I have a total of negative 4i's times the square root of 11. And then when I square this last, or when I multiply the last terms right here, I end up with i squared, so plus i squared, times, and then multiply the square root of 11's together. So the square root of 11 times the square root of 11 is just 11. Now we're ready to simplify a little further. Don't forget that when I have i squared right here, that's technically negative 1, isn't it? So this is really negative 11 because of that i squared. So I have 4 minus 11, which is a negative 7, and I can't do anything with this term here. It can't com be combined with anything else, so minus 4i times the square root of 11. And you can see that this is written in its standard form where we have the real portion uh, minus the imaginary portion, which is right here. Okay, the last one we want to look at is this division problem over here. We have a uh, we have real numbers in the denominator, so that's going to be okay with us, and we just need to figure out how to handle this numerator up here. Well, we want to start by rewriting the negative portion up here, the negative radical up here, as negative 15 minus i times the square root of 18, all divided by 33. 
So we took care of the negative number, we brought it out as an i. Now we need to go back and we need to remember how can I simplify the square root of 18? It's not a perfect square, so I can't just get a real pretty number. Instead, I'm going to have uh, something a little bit more involved. So off to the side up here. If you recall, if I take the square root of 18 and I simplify it, what I'm looking for when I simplify uh, this, since I'm taking the square root of 18, I want to think to myself, what are perfect square factors of 18? Perfect square factors. Well, that would be a 9 times 2, because 9 is the first perfect square factor of 18. Now, it's true that 6 times 3 gives me 18 also, but 6 is not a perfect square and neither is 3. So that didn't help me. Instead, 9, which is a perfect square, times 2 gives me the 18. And we want to do that because if I rewrite this as its factors, under the square root symbol here, I can think of this in terms of the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And I can take the square root of 9 and get 3 times the square root of 2. Okay, so you remember how to do that? You've probably done it before, it just maybe has been a while. So now we have negative 15 minus 3i times the square root of 2, because the i comes down, and we know that the square root of 18 is can be simplified to be the 3 square roots of 2, and all of that's divided by 33. We're not finished yet because I can simplify this fraction further. When I do that, um, you can do this kind of two ways. First, we can think of this as two separate fractions, where I have negative 15 33rds, 33, minus uh, 3i times the square root of 2 over 33, right? Because what do we do when we add and subtract fractions? We add or subtract their numerators and we keep the denominators the same. If that's the case, then I can take this fraction and I just rewrite it as two separate fractions with their common denominator of 33 and all I ended up doing was separating their numerators out. Sometimes that makes it easier for us to be able to simplify each individual fraction. So in the first fraction, I know that uh, 3 is going to divide into both the top and bottom, so I end up with negative 5 elevenths, and then I'm just going to bring that minus sign down. And 3 divides into both the numerator and denominator here, so I get i square roots of 2 over 11 here. Now that is one form of my answer, negative 5 elevenths minus i square roots of 2 over 11. Another form of my answer is to write this two, these two fractions as a single fraction, like we maybe started with. So my numerator, now remember, what happens when we add and subtract fractions? We add or subtract the numerators, so I would have a negative 5 minus i square roots of 2 all over the same denominator of 11. Both answers are acceptable. It doesn't make any difference to me or the computer which um, answer you put it in, and just understand that either one will be acceptable.